Thank you for joining us and welcome to our first webinar in a new series on the strategies of high net worth families. Today's episode is on how high net worth families invest. I'm Matt Ellison from Ellison Associates Wealth Management and I'll be moderating our session with William Ellis as our presenter. This episode should last about 15 minutes and if you have any questions please type them in the chat box during the session and we'll address them in the time allotted at the end. The webinar is being recorded and we'll send you a link afterwards so you can view anything you miss or to pass it along to someone who might benefit from listening. As always, we'll post it on our website where you can view it anytime. You can also view our previous webinar episodes on our website in our content library. Our webinar today has five sections. The first is a look at traditional asset allocation. The second and third sections examine the allocations of a pension plan and ultra high net worth investors. The fourth section takes a, look, takes a closer look at, the, at high net worth investment strategies. And finally, in the last section, William walks through the decision making process for what strategies may be right for your family. Matt, before we get started, to give some context, there are three phases in financial life. The first phase is paying things off. The second phase is capital accumulation. And the third phase is asset management. Most high net worth families find themselves in either the second or the third phase of life where they're serious about accumulating assets or they are managing what they have built. They have a serious amount of capital available for investing. Today we're going to talk about how high net worth families invest their capital. The traditional asset allocation model for investors is 60-40 as shown here on this slide. 60% equities and 40% bonds to provide a balance of income which would come from dividends and interest balanced against capital appreciation from equities and again balanced against the stability and certainty from bonds. Over the 1980s and 1990s this approach worked given that the 1980s started with all-time record high interest rates which provided investors an attractive interest income from bonds augmented by capital gains on bonds as interest rates more or less continually marched lower. Equities, that 60%, provided dividend income and significant capital appreciation, albeit the capital appreciation was not in a straight line. Looking back, the 80s and the 90s were an outstanding time for investors. The traditional asset allocation model of 60-40 served investors very well. Where do bond yields sit today? Well, Matt, if we fast forward to today, as indicated on the estimated market yield slide, bond yields are very close to all-time record lows. So what do you think that indicates about the investment returns from bonds over the next 10, 20, or 30 years? Well, buying and holding bonds will earn you the interest, the coupon, the 2 or 3 percent as indicated on this slide. But if you need to sell prior to maturity, as interest rates rise, you'll expose yourself to capital losses which could eat up even your modest interest income. So what's your conclusion? Well, the traditional asset allocation model of 60 percent equities, 40 percent bonds is broken in today's environment. As indicated, uh, the estimated market yields on the equity components here, our dividend portfolio and our growth portfolios, are quite satisfactory. However, that 40% bonds doesn't provide the needed income or the capital stability they used to. So what's the implication for investors? Well, a different asset allocation is necessary. As we've discussed many times before, uh, do the math. At a 2% interest rate, ask yourself how much money do you need invested in GICs to generate $60,000 of income a year? $60,000 of income at 2% work backwards, you need $3 million. So I have two additional questions. Can you live on $60,000 a year? And secondly, do you have $3 million? Never mind taxes on the interest income or the effect of inflation. If you have a problem with either living on $60,000 a year or the $3 million principal amount, you need another solution. 
What is that solution? Well, high net worth investors are not alone facing this dilemma of super low interest rates. Pension plans face the uh, same issue. And on this slide, we have the asset allocation of the CPP, Canada Pension Plan. How are they allocated? Well, it's divided really uh, to the left side and the right side. On the left side of the pie chart, we see equities, three categories of equities, foreign uh, developed nations, Canadian and emerging markets, totaling 50%. And of that total, you notice uh, Canadian equities at 8.4%. The remainder, 41.6%, is outside of Canada. So instead of a traditional 6% allocation of equities, the allocation is 50%. That's right. And the allocation to bonds, rather than being 40, is 30, leaving 20% remaining. And this is allocated between infrastructure and real estate. And this next slide shows an example of high net worth asset allocation from Tiger 21. William, what is Tiger 21? Well, I guess it's a new, uh, a new group uh, that we're starting to hear about more in Canada. It's the premier peer-to-peer -peer learning network for high net worth investors, ultra high net worth in a sense. Likely no one Tiger 21 member though has the asset allocation shown here because it's the average of the whole group. However, it is instructive to consider the average asset allocation of this group, the Tiger 21. You'll notice that the allocation to public equities is 23%, bonds 15%, and cash as a strategic asset of 12. When you uh, add all of those up, you get 50%. And many high net worth investors in this group, Tiger 21, have made their money through owning a business or through owning real estate. So you'll see that they have here a generous allocation to each of those. What can you tell us about this slide? Well, it's a, a slide that helps us to understand or characterize how high net worth investors behave. High net worth investors are the type of people who know the difference between income from their investments and capital. And if you want an indication of whether you're the, a high net worth investor or have the potential to be a high net worth investor, ask yourself this question. What would you do if someone gave you a million dollars? You inherited it, you found it, you had a windfall. Would you think about how you'd spend the money? Or would you invest the money, perhaps spending the income, or maybe not even uh, spending, spending the income? But if you're not likely to touch the capital, you're a high net worth investor, uh, potentially. They leave the capital to grow. They also match the portfolio cash inflows with their lifestyle cash needs. They diversify. And because they don't need to touch their capital, they're able to invest in opportunities that have enhanced return potential and favorable tax treatment. And can you explain this slide for us? Sure. The asset allocation of the past was 60-40. That doesn't work anymore. High net worth investors, in other words, those investors with sufficient capital that they don't need to be drawing on all of their assets and selling out their capital to meet their needs, they're able to diversify their investment beyond the standard stocks and bonds to look more like a foundation or a pension fund or the Tiger 21 group. And they include attractive alternatives as indicated here like infrastructure, private equity, real estate, hedge funds. Now of course each family is different and each allocation depends on what's appropriate in the circumstances. There is a give up. High net worth investors on the right side of this chart need to give up immediate liquidity. They perhaps need to expand their time horizon. They may need to defer some immediate income. And in some cases they need to hire specialist managers for a portion of pie. And in return for doing that and accepting those conditions, high net worth investors 
uh, are in line for enhanced returns, deferred tax, lower tax payable, and diversification beyond the standard uh, available in public markets. So how do you get started? Well, before we talk about the specifics of asset allocation, investments, or the money, we need to first figure out what is right for your family. What is your purpose? Then we need to talk about where are you today? Where do you want to be? What's the money for? And then finally, how are we going to get there? And after we've established good answers to all these questions, at that point we're able to turn our attention to asset allocation, uh, you know, investment selection, and managing the money. Now we're going to take some questions from the chat. The first one I have here, William, is how, you're being asked how do we define high net worth? Yes, we, uh, we received this question in an email and I, I guess they were looking for a dollar figure. Uh, so to take advantage of some of the alternative investments that we showed in the prior slide there, typically investors would have uh, as a minimum two million dollars is that including real estate? No, that, that's in addition to real estate. Real estate's off to the side. We're looking here at financial assets. And can you give us an example of a client that has implemented some of these strategies? Yes, so we have a client who received a windfall. It was a settlement. And this settlement involved monthly income over a set period of years as well as a lump sum. The monthly income was more or less sufficient to meet their immediate lifestyle needs. So the lump sum was available for long-term investing. And uh, they realized that the, the monthly settlement of income at some point in the future would run out. So this money had to be preserved. It had to be grown. So, uh, but they didn't need immediate income. So it was appropriate to um, invest the dividends, uh, portfolio that we're very familiar with, but look to alternatives for other options. Okay, we have one more question here. Where do you account for risk in your analysis? Well, that's a great question. Thanks for posing that uh, today. And what we're looking here, and, and perhaps we didn't point it out, is that on that slide that we showed there, the alternatives offer a diversifying effect to the client. Okay, so in public markets, uh, you're subject to the ebb and flow of the, the manic depressive nature of, of public markets. Uh, these other assets, infrastructure, um, private equity, and so on, the, these are not publicly traded. Their, their um, valuation is much more stable and less tied to the public market. So you're, you're going to have, um, in fact, more diversification. So I guess lo less volatility uh, in the, uh, the investment results month by month, year by year. But I would add that in terms of risk, that each of those sleeves on the right-hand side, be it infrastructure, hedge, or so on, they would all be invested where the, the mis risk was very manageable and um, what was you, you would be very comfortable with it and, and, and it would be appropriate in your circumstances. Thanks, Will. So there's no more questions in the chat. Thank you for joining us today. And if you'd like to, dus to discuss today's webinar further, please feel free to contact us at 416-969-3190. Thank you, and I will now end today's session.